Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, there's still more stories in this book. We continue our journey through my bedtime book of two-minute stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories are The Football Match by Rosemary Garland and Gretchen the Little Dutch Doll by Margaret Connor. Start off with the football match. James wanted to be a football player when he grew up. He watched the football match every Saturday, but not with the crowd who paid to go in because James couldn't afford to pay. James had a secret way of watching. He had found a little hole in the fence at just the right height for himself, and he peeped through that. Of course, he couldn't watch all the game, only when the players came to the goal at his end of the field. One Saturday, he was watching the match as usual when Bert, the carpenter, came along. Hello, who's winning? asked Bert. I don't know, said James. The team in the red shirt seems to be very good because they are always near the goal at the other end of the field this week. I can't see them through this hole when they are playing at the other end. Well, said Bert, shall I drill a hole for you with my big drill? He bent down and started to open his tool kit to find the drill. Oh no, said James, a little frightened. He knew that wouldn't be at all right. You can't drill holes in other people's fences. Perhaps you're right, but I tell you what, said Bert. I know quite a lot about wood. Let me show you something. Have you ever heard of knots? The knots they learn in Boy Scouts? asked James. No, knots in wood are different, laughed Bert. Come and look here. Every piece of wood has long lines in it. That's called the grain. But every now and then you find a little circle of hard wood. That's called a knot in the wood. Look, there's one. He pointed to a circle in the wood. Now, do you know what that knot was when this piece of wood was a tree? A branch grew out of that knot once, said Bert proudly. Oh, said James. But he did not understand how that was going to help him see the football match. Now said Bert mysteriously. When a fence is old and dry, the wood shrinks in that little circle of wood sometimes, only sometimes, mind you, falls out, leaving a hole for young boys like you to peep through. Let's look for one near the other end, shall we? They looked and looked. James found one. He pressed his finger gently into the knot, and the little circle of wood fell out. There, what did I tell you? said Bert, and off he went, whistling happily. So now James ran from one hole to the other, watching the football players as they moved from one end of the field to the other. Suddenly, the football came whizzing right over the top of the fence. James ran to pick it up, but he was not big enough to throw the ball back again. James and the captain talked through one of James' little knot holes. Can you bring the ball round to the gates? asked the captain. Proudly, James carried the big ball under his arm and marched up to the gatekeeper. This little fellow saved our ball for us, said the captain. I think he deserves to be allowed to come in and watch the rest of the match. The gatekeeper let James in, and for the first time, James watched the match in the best seats. At the end of the match, the captain came and lifted James up on his shoulder and gave him a ride through the crowds but James still watched the football match from his little knot holes every Saturday after that. Just to point out to Americans, this is British football, a.k.a. what we call soccer. I'm okay with football. I always wondered why American football was called football anyways. I need to go and do the research on it again because I heard at one point, but I don't remember anymore. You Because know, soccer makes more sense to call it football. Because you're kicking the ball with your yeah. feet. Only the goalie uses their hands. Interesting. Yeah, I almost thought that the old man would say, no, I own this fence. <laughs> kind of interesting. I'm trying to figure out what this story was trying to like convey. But what was the lesson? Were they trying to teach them about word grain and knots? Was it trying to teach them about football? Was it trying to teach about how to get a free slash cheap view of the game? 
Yeah, it doesn't really seem to have a lesson. Not all of these ones do. And it's another one of those stories that's like, it feels almost incomplete. Well, not much happened. We know James is broke and he likes football. That's about all we know. But now onto the art. They have some really nice shots here. They have the end shot where they have James up on top of the cap, who I'm assuming the captain's shoulders because it says Captain lifting him up on his shoulders. And we have the old man. And we have a nice close-up shot of one of the knots that we're looking through at the game. All very nicely detailed, very nicely rendered. I'm not really seeing any odd spots in particular. Everything looks really nice. The perspective in the larger shot with the old man and the boy at the fence, the boy looking through the fence, and then the football game going on behind the fence. You can actually see over top of the fence in that shot. Nice texturing and coloring on the grass in the football game. I'd like to know where James's parents think he is at this point and how old James is because he looks rather young here that he can just be wandering around outside the field of a football game. It was a more innocent time. Also, I'm thinking this was like based on the name. It's over in Europe, you know, because Americans don't call it football. We mm. call it soccer. Yeah. That of the author is from over there. I don't know. Really? You think a storybook that has a big red double-decker bus is the U.S.? I, I kind of noticed that. You know, right there on the front cover. I mean, this was published out of New York, but printed in England by Ward and Lock Company Limited. Published in the United States by Grosset and Dunlap. Copyright belonging to Eurobook Limited. Ah. I never said anything because I thought it was obvious. Yeah, it wasn't that obvious to me. Until now. Mm, nothing really brings it home like football versus soccer. Yeah. Alright, and we have a poem here. With a cute red panda, I believe that's called. Mm. Even though it's not really a panda. On top of a sunlit veranda lived a remarkably fat lesser panda, always licking his paws and crunching his jaws as he munched bamboo shoots from Uganda. Okay, cute poem, but it must be an article of the time, because I believe that's a red panda, which, like I said before, is not technically a panda. Right, but still Red Panda would be a common name, not a scientific name. So mm. that's a name that could vary by location. Mm. And it looks kind of cute. It's like it's staring at the camera going, ooh? Like, ooh, are you? <laughs> and the tail's hanging down, on top of a tree, very nicely drawn, nice coloring, nice blue background. It makes the text really easy to read. So now, moving on. <laughs> oh, oh. I'll describe this later, and it will also be the thumbnail of this particular story, but ha! Huh. Yes, so now Gretchen the Little Dutch Doll by Margaret Connor. Gretchen the Little Dutch Doll belonged to Mandy, but Mandy was such a careless girl, and whenever she dropped anything, she never bothered to pick it up. She just left it, even Gretchen. This made Gretchen cross. She liked to keep her white cap and apron nice and clean, and she didn't like her blue and white dress to get too creased, nor did she like to get mud on her white shoes, and certainly not on her pretty pink cheeks. But it didn't worry Mandy. She'd take poor Gretchen into the garden, drop her down and leave her there, sometimes flat on her back with her legs stuck up in the air. How would she like to be left out like that? Grumbled Gretchen to herself when no one was around to hear. Once, Mandy left her in the garden and it began to rain. Luckily, Rags the puppy saw her and carried her indoors. Gretchen thought it was kind of him, but she wished he hadn't dropped her into Mrs. Cat's basket. Mrs. Cat was very kind. She let Gretchen share the cushion in her basket. She treated her just like one of her own kittens. As soon as Mrs. Cat had gone to sleep, Gretchen slipped quietly out of the basket. She slid across the kitchen floor to the chair by the window, 
Luckily for her, someone had knocked the tea cozy onto the floor and not noticed it. So she crawled under the chair and pulled the tea cozy over her for the night. She felt safe there from everybody. She must have slept well, because when she woke up in the morning, she could hear the family having breakfast. But Mandy didn't want any breakfast. I want my Gretchen, she kept saying. Boo-hoo, I don't want any breakfast, I want my Gretchen. Gretchen was surprised to hear how much Mandy loved her. She thought perhaps she'd better come out from under the tea cozy. Mandy's mother said, If you weren't so careless, Mandy, and treated Gretchen better, you wouldn't lose her. However, I don't suppose she's far away. I'm sure we'll find her after breakfast. Just then, Rags, the puppy, saw Gretchen and he barked. That made Mother and Mandy look under the chair. Oh, there she is! There's my dear little Gretchen! cried Mandy, picking her up and giving her a big kiss and a hug. Fancy that, said Mother. She was hiding under my tea cozy. Mandy took great care of Gretchen after that. She cleaned the doll's face and hands and washed and ironed her clothes and never left her out in the rain again. She even took her to bed with her, just to make sure she was safe at night. And Gretchen thought Mandy must be the nicest little girl in the world, and she loved her ever after. Okay, I thought this might become a horror story, because the large rendering on the second page, something about those eyes screams, uh, 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 something screams Twilight Zone talking Tina. Uh, or, uh, what's the name of that movie? The one with Chucky. Child's Play? Yes, that. She She's cute, but she's also that kind of, I don't want to meet her in a dark alley. Especially since it is very clearly stated in this story that she has movement. Yes. And this is nothing against the artist. The doll is actually very well rendered, very well done. Missing a few colors. We're back on to tonal sketches as opposed to full color sketches. This time's more of a orange red with the black. We got the little girl on the first page over here with the dog. And we can see the cat and another little thing in the corner here. And we have Gretchen on the ground with her feet up in the air based on the scene that was described in the story. This is kind of a cute story. I think the lesson is take care of your toys because they might come back to haunt you. <laughs> yeah, not just your toys, but take care of your things because Mandy's mother says that she is careless and that she doesn't treat Gretchen well. So it's not only just plain take care of your stuff, take care and take care of things. And said, treated Gretchen better, you wouldn't lose her. So also treat others kindly. All applied towards a doll, but still. Mm. And we have another poem. Two stories in a row with poems. Nice. The Toy Train. Toy Train Timmy, chugging round the track. No sooner here than he's going back. Puffing past the signals, hooting at the signs. Timmy's very happy he's on the railway lines. Very smooth. The rhyming feels very nice because sometimes rhyming can feel forced it doesn't feel forced here and i like the rendering of the cute train in the corner there well i should say at the bottom of the poem and we have the tracks at the top basically a front part of the tracks going into the tunnel and a bottom part of the tracks is the train coming out of the tunnel very nice very simplified illustrations too and the smoke is all swirly and stuff like that very artistically swirly like okami cloud surrounding. So what did you think? Well I think most people can probably guess these weren't two I read a lot. Uh, did you get that impression of that doll that I got when I first saw this image? No no because I wasn't really looking her directly in the eyes. Thank you so much for that. Dolls are creepy. <laughs> yeah it's that whole uncanny valley thing. That's what you heard about recently. That's one of the things that a doll suffers from, is it's just realistic enough when you look at it that you can swear it moves. And that's what makes you go, Ooh. Of course, then you get into those rooms where you hear one of those dolls that goes, Mama, on its own without anything interacting with it. And you're like, nope, I'm out. So gone. So gone. So, yes, two nice stories, not ones I would have chosen. As you notice, they're not really 
about animals, so. They're not about stories either, like I believe the last two stories were. Oh, or that was the ones before. That was the ones before the um, birds and... Yeah, you're thinking of the Little Church. That was a couple episodes ago. Little Church and Cowslip Keys, as opposed to Lost in the Jungle and Moving House. Mm-hmm. This has been another installment of My Bedtime Book of Two-Minute Stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by... Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories were The Football Match by Rosemary Garland and Gretchen, The Little Dutch Doll by Margaret Connor. If you enjoyed this, there are lots of other My Two Minute Bedtime Story installments. We're close to halfway through the book now, so we're almost halfway there. Tired of two minute stories? There are lots of other stories. Also, there's the main channel, you know, pop culture. Looks, draws pretty pictures, so stuff to check out. I draw good. He's smarter than he sounds. Hi. Also, he draws better than he talks. True, true. <laughs> uh, if you are enjoying this book and you haven't picked up a copy from, you know, the other seven or eight episodes, Amazon link, also for shopping. People still like Amazon, right? <laughs> I mean, I know people go to stores, but people still mostly shop online, right? So check out the Ebates link and get cash back for shopping at stores you probably already shop at. It does actually work in brick and mortar stores too, but there's an extra step. Check those out. Have fun. Thank you again for listening.